Hey guys, it's Rottweiler back at it again with another video and today I'm going to be talking about potentially my final Sylvanos guide because I think I've finally figured this character out to a science. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. So before I even get into the Sylvanos part of this video, you gotta understand that I have kind of combined traditional fighters and platform fighters and how they work. I just figured out that they're doing the same things, but they're like they're both executing. How do I say this? Traditional fighters and platform fighters are doing the same things, but they're executing the, the the fighting game formula differently so basically i used to be like a, a player that comboed off of feel back in the day because i didn't really uh want to do anything other than like be flashy with my combos and so i would just kind of like hit you and kind of take it as far as i could but i kind of lost that feel in like recent years and so i kind of was forced to understand how i was comboing people uh, by just feeling it out without being able to feel it out anymore. And the way I was able to figure it out was actually through Tekken, funny enough. So, I don't know if you guys know how the block system works in Tekken, but essentially the main mix-up are between mids and lows. If you think your opponent's going to hit you with a mid, you stand still and you block standing. And when the mid comes, you know, you'll be blocking it. But if they went for a low, your legs will be exposed and you'll take some damage and you'll, you'll gain some frames. But if you think they're going to go low, you obviously crouch block and you'll get opened up to mids now. So that's the main 50-50 in Tekken. That is actually basically in Rivals of Aether. Um, but it's, it's different. So when you hit somebody in this game... That is the same as you essentially touching someone blocking in Tekken. Think of it that way. Imagine, I know that sounds weird because they're being hit in this game, but it's a little bit opposite, right? So imagine, like we don't have shields, right? Uh, so if you get hit, what is your defense? It is your DI, right? Imagine you're stand blocking in, a, in like a Tekken and someone is hitting your block, okay? That is that is the same idea here. Your like your block is being pressured, and, and this damage the raster is taking, we can consider that chip damage, right? And when the raster player dies, his HP bar hits zero. Okay, that is that I know that sounds a little weird, but this is how I think about it, and this is how I actually get gross shit now. Now this is where the the mid and low comparison comes in now. So, okay, he's being pressured, we're pressuring his block. He can either DI out, or basically DI in, basically. Because any other DI is, is basically catchable. Uh, you just have to wait, right? So, that's like a mid-low mix-up in Rivals of Ether. Once you get hit, okay, where's he gonna go? Okay, I can either go mid or low. All right, so essentially, if I, if I want to combo this raster, right, and I and land this up air too, and he DIs out, right, I get nothing. But if he DIs in on this up air too, it's free. So in Tekken, you have to understand that when you hit someone, the game rewards you with plus frames. And what you're supposed to do with those plus frames is find another mix on them while they're having to guess now because they're too minus to even challenge your next hit because you're plus so this creates mix-ups where now they can be vortex where it's like i hit him with a mid and now okay i'm plus and he may think i'm going for another mid but actually i went low and now i'm still plus and now he's like wait what's going on what you know and though so now i'm starting to mix him and open him up and get more and more damage as I open him up with these mixes, right? Rivals of Ether works the exact same way on hit. Except you replace the I like you replace like that blocking situation with DIing and um and, and yeah, DIing really. Um that that is the blocking. That like 
correct correctly successful okay missing your di in rivals of ether is the equivalent to not blocking correctly on a mid low mix up in tekken that's how you have to think about it like oh he's going mid or he's going overhead oh he's going low you gotta you gotta switch your block right you have to switch your di depending on how you're getting combo and so if you don't know like if you get mixed you'll get opened up even more di out right let's say i nared you i get a free mix up because you can't go anywhere right and i'll get way deeper into this later but let's say i nair you and you can't go anywhere i get a free mix up this is where that low or mid situation comes in in Tekken. Okay, so is he gonna hit me with a mid or a low? Do I need to DI out or do I need to DI in, right? Because if you hold out, right, and I up air, I can't combo off of that up air at, at all. This is how I've kind of broken it down in my head. And it'll make way more sense as we go on to the rest of Sylvanos' combo moves and his kit, why I think like that and how it actually helps me to think like that as I'm hitting people. Every attack, every single move in this game, especially on Sylvanos, uh, you hit someone with, you are recre recreating a mix. You're mixing them. Everything Sylvanos has, has a specific requirement or straight up no answer. And that's what I've, I've realized. He has like f four, four to five attacks that in the sense of a traditional Tekken game or whatever, would be considered unblockables. So if we're talking about how missing DI, right, is the equivalent to not blocking a mid or a low correctly, not guessing right. If you miss your DI, you get comboed harder, you get pressured harder, you take more damage. In Tekken, if you guess wrong on a mid or low, you eat the low or the mid and you are forced to take more damage, right? And you're still forced to stand there it's the same idea as this, eating this and guessing wrong, guessing wrong, guessing wrong, guessing wrong, guessing wrong, press, mid, low, mid, low, mid, like keep the guesses coming, make them guess everything, right? You end up, you end up seeing it when, when you get really in, locked in in this game, especially this game. Right, so Sylvanos has four to five unblockables in the sense that no matter where you DI, the, the mid-low mix-up doesn't matter because it's going to, it will always give me another hit. For example, no matter how, no matter, especially at low percents, right? I'm, and I'm especially talking about low percents here. No matter where you DI, in, out, this is in, like the side B will give me something, no matter what, right? I will always, no matter what, at low percents, as long as I'm, I'm, my, my human error doesn't come to like right there, I will get something, no matter, even on DI out, correct? Like, at low percents. This, oh, hold on, I gotta change the combo, but, like, look, I get something always. I want to delay that, yeah, like, that, I get something always. And this is at 70 on raster on DI out, actually, so it's still comboing easily. Like, this is what I mean when I'm when I'm saying this is an unblockable. No matter what you di, no matter how you guess mid or low, no matter what you guess, side B will always get me another hit. No matter what, no at low percents, always. And if I'm if I'm really on point, side B in the air will even give me something at all percents still. Same with his up tilt. At low percents, his up tilt isn't unblockable in the sense again that no matter how you DI, I'm going to get something, right? I can always get something. His Nair is the longest lasting unblockable because if you put them in like 200%, as long as they do not DI Nair, I will always get something. Or not DI, I'm sorry. Tech, not DI, I meant to say tech because this is techable. I will always get something on DI, it's just straight DI out even. You see, tech is the only thing that thing that gets them out. This is what I mean by that's an unblockable in fight in Tekken in Tekken terms. That would be considered an unblockable because you can't guard the next hit. You're you're forced to eat something, right? You're forced to eat something unblockable in that sense. I had to keep saying that because this video was also for me because I will inevitably forget all of this because it's how I am. So I'm trying to really like 
forced like slogan this into my head when I watch this video years from now or later. You know, I I, I want to remember how I think. So sorry if this is kind of like patronizing in the in the way that I keep repeating myself. <laughs> so we've established that side B is an unblockable. His up tilt is an unblockable. His nair is the last is the longest lasting unblockable because again you cannot like, you, you, I will always get something no, no matter where you di uh, next is his down air which is the the one that's kind of hard to use because it's it's it gives you the least amount of time to react off of it but you can always technically get something at low percents, especially off of this. At very low percents, up air, up air 2 is the exact same. That's why I love up air 2. At extremely low percents, up air 2 is basically unblockable. So, Slavanos' side B, his up tilt, his nair, and his up air and down air at very low percentages. Those, those five attacks are essentially unblockable in Tekken terms because no matter where you DI at very low percents and it just keeps scaling and you kind of lose options as the percent gets higher but no matter where you DI Sylvanos can mix you into another move for free that is what creates his blender combos uh, it doesn't matter how you DI Sylvanos B Stash I will always get something out of this, right? That's how I think about this game now when I'm comboing people. And it doesn't. This is not just a Sylvanos thing. This is a, every character. Like every character in Rivals, either has like this sense of unblockables and, and mixes with the eye. This is how we get a combo system, right? But I figured it out in a way I can articulate it in like almost a scientific way, I guess. But like using tech and terminology. The thing about Sylvanos and why he has the biggest blender in the game, I realize, is because. He has the most specific requirements to escape his moves that other characters do not have. Like for example, it takes, you have to hold away from him. You can't just briefly hold away from this down tilt, right? Like, let's go out and then out. Like to get away from this, you have to continuously hold out for both the hits. For his forward tilt, you have to hold out that entire duration, right? You have to hold out, hold the eye, you have to hold that. When he jabs you, you have to DI down and away, no tech parry, right? When you're getting hit by up tilt, down air at low percents, up air at low percents, beast dash, or nair at any time, he can infinite you and and I mean you can't be I these are all unblock unblockable is what I'm saying those all those moves are unblockable so everything he does to you is either chaining into an unblockable or a move that requires specific DI or or parry even with that DI to get away from and so a lot of times if you as a Sylvanos player mix that all together they have no chance to guess right ever because it's like okay every sylvanos player does nair down air maybe nair well, this is already new even even that was already too new for Sylvano. I, I'm, I'm too fresh with it like you know in this game if you're if you get comboed on di out it makes you want to di in because it tells you di out doesn't work so it's so cool to me that even on hardy the lightest character in the game he goes the furthest one being hit I can still chain together forward tilt and the down tilt. And that was a true combo on hard DI out on the lightest character. You know what that means? That means that it is telling him that DI out is not working. Let's try holding in because DI out still isn't working. And so when he hold in, now I can mix you with this forward, like another forward tilt or an up tilt. And, or in the, and that up tilt has no answer. Like this nair has no answer unless tech. Like you have to tech this nair. The reason why this nair is always techable is because it lasts the longest of his unblockable but like it's going to like 200 percent right this nair will, will function as if you're at zero still it functions as if you're still at zero you know this will always guarantee so you're required to tech nair you're required to hold out on this you're required to hold out on this you're required to t 
DCI down, DI yeah, down and away, no tech these jabs and parry. And you have to parry because the wave will, will still hit you. Like you're still not done getting out of that. Like there's so many times I see people like do the correct DI but don't get the parry in time. And like, oh man, I feel bad for the guy, but I'm about to keep jabbing. But the amount of ways this character has to force a new requirement on you is so ridiculous. That he that's how he gets the blender. Because no there's no humanly possible way you can deal with unblockables that chain into themselves into moves that have specific requirements now that he can mix you on which requirement you, need, you now need to perform even cortez court at one point top 10 player i don't think i've ever seen him parry these once while being hit while being hit by it not one time have i think i've ever seen him di down in a way parry these damn things like i've hit full stream with these on repeat i've hit I've hit cake assault with this on stream many like into itself uh, across the stage so when people like act people can't act like this these requirements are easy to get out of they're not they're hard to get out of especially when you're put on the spot you chain your unblockables together and mix them with moves that now require specific di patterns or specific techniques to escape on the fly and they can't do it because you, if you're mixing well enough they just can't and then we got to talk about howl which is his best move i never i you know i used to say this character's best move was back air well first when they gave him jab special i thought this was easily his best move period because you know it's the pedal wave and then they gave it grass magic <laughs> so i thought this was his best move this is his best move it is this is this move when skirmishes this move wins trades this move is the best anti-air in the game and it's but it's locked behind setup that's how good it is that they make you set it up first after watching sego versus Dorai, the idea of free invisible pressure has been raining on me like constantly and a huge question I had was, what is Sylvanos' invisible pressure, right? And I finally figured out what it was, or what it is. It's grass, and that's so obvious, like, but, but it's like, how is it grass, right? Why is it grass? It's Howl. All of this is immediate pressure. This is free, because if you think about it, Howl seems so bad in neutral only because Silvano's players will howl when you're standing on the ground and then you'll parry it and then it's like damn he got rid of all his grass and he's frozen I'm about to kill him off this opening like holy shit terrible move right that's what people always think about how even I thought that to the point where I hated having grass like like how this this fucking stage is right now fully covered in grass I used to hate that because I would think damn now howl is dead because if i howl he'll parry it and i just lose neutral like from like this whatever it's like because if he if i guess wrong and he ends up running away and then like i howl and then he's like oh look all that howl all the time and then parry i used to hate howl right because i wasn't using it right that's why i used to hate it and i think a lot of sil players are, are at that point with howl as well and even people who play against Silvanos probably think howl is like on that same level because Silvanos players think it's bad but the reality is you just have to wait for them to leave the ground and now it's live the moment they try to come back down is when howl is the best move in the game you just need to be in it the scary part is you don't even have to howl every time they want to come down and that conditioning will really fuck them up because they may come down and air dodge for free and it's like huh you thought about howl and i get a free nair just this grass being here once you've completely conditioned them to, to be scared to come on the ground it's like it's like you play into his lore on purpose he's supposed to be scary on the ground because his long range normals this unreactable side b this is a read if they parry this this is a read. the amount of times i've hit people who think it'll even stop or think i'll stop and it keeps going because they're not used to, for, to any move in this game having burst range that goes this far and being that fast i think you're gonna stop like this is faster than an edilus dash attack this is so fast like this is so fast right this unreactable so they're scared to be on the ground especially when you start doing stuff like this and start mixing off of the, the flowers like you have to have grass management it is so important to have grass management to the point where having patches of grass 
is actually better. Sometimes, like, let me kill myself real quick. <laughs> so, like, I'll howl early like this, right? Because now when I set grass up over there, I can howl like this, and now I have more howl right here, and now I can make work and howl right here, and now howls back up, and now I can howl right now. I can howl. Like, look at how often I can howl if I just patch my grass with one howl first. This is, this is so many anti-errors. Obviously, you're not gonna be spamming howl this often, but, but the amount of times he can howl is more than you think if you have good grass management as a Silvanos player. Kill your own grass with side B and make it safe off of, e off of eating a flower, and now you've, you've started the patch thing again, right? You started it up again. You need to have good grass control. And if you think that's anywhere near a meme, there is a player named CWS, and I finally understand his play style now, but he got rolling nerfed on Silvanos. Notice how there are gaps in between this grass patch here. CWS got that nerfed. There used to be grass in between all that, so this whole stage would still be covered in grass by me just doing this, right? Which is pretty crazy when you think about it because you're like invincibly putting down this broken mechanic and no one really understood, I don't think, why that was broken or what he was doing with that and all he was really doing was catching people's jump-ins with Howl and he was spamming Howl. This is what he was doing to people. He was throwing seeds and, and, and he was throwing seeds and spamming Howl. That's what got that's what he got nerfed. This this was his playstyle. And then he would open you up with these broken giant jabs. That's what he would do. Literally. That is how C CWS played his character and I didn't even like I couldn't even visibly see it until I just started to figure out this character's neutral myself with these seeds and with Howl. Then I realized this is how I kept losing to CWS. He just kept anti-airing with Howl into into Nair into some jabs. And then he would, with no tech skill at all, just to carry you across the stage and restart it back up with more Howl. And then he would make you frustrated with Howl and know how you would DI in and then he would punish you. Like that's literally how simple he played it. And I didn't recognize it because I, I, would, I didn't see the character that way. I didn't see grass as important at all. So this all matters, you know? This all, all matters. I learned from CWS. He mixes you with numerous unblockables into moves that have specific requirements to get out. And once you have a read on how they get out, even, or, a, or if you have a read that they will get out, right? But don't necessarily know where they will go. That's when Howl comes in to catch wherever they go. That's all, all you need to know to land a Howl during a tech chase is to know, are oh, they gonna get out of this somehow? Like, that's all you have to read. The thing about this jazz special, I have to I have to say this, because I always get so, I, like, I used to get really confused when I landed this move. Because sometimes, I would feel like I'm the most powerful character in the world, but other times I feel like I was the most, like, vulnerable character at the same time. So, when you do a jazz special, and that pedal wave comes out, don't even look at the right. Just look to the left, or look where you're at. Do not, Ever, like the pedal wave you have to think of it as you running over there with a hitbox like this wave is you you're that wave and if you think about it that way okay I'm sending like a clone of myself like like literally like Naruto style to go over there and cover you while I stand guard here and cover any other tech tech option think of how think of jazz special pedal wave like that and you will find yourself with far more crazy openings than, than, you, than you've ever gotten before. That, that's what you do. Use the wave as pressure. It's pressure, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a free, it's not an auto combo in the side B or, or down B. It's not an auto combo, that's why I used to think of it. I used to think, uh, think of, oh, if I get, jet, I used to be so one track tunnel vision mind. This is what I'm saying, I had to learn the Tekken way of comboing because it didn't, it, the way I was thinking wasn't working anymore. Where I would be like, oh, if I get jab special, that must mean I get Howl, or that must mean I get Side B. When I should be thinking, oh, if I get this Jazz Special Pedal Wave off, I get a free mix here with something else. I get a, I get a mix here. You don't get a, a guaranteed, like, specific attack. You get anything. You're just a mix. Like, think of it as a mix. Everything you do is simply a mix. Everything. That's why you do different moves always. You're looking for a mix like you're trying to mix these players you're not trying to 
to, to formulate a, like a, a flow chart, it's not going to work with this character. You cannot flow chart this character. You have to you have to look for a mix. You have to intentionally know this character's hitboxes and and, and, and di lines enough, literally, to to be able to be like, oh, he these are okay. If I hit him with down air and he misses the di, these are the options I get from that. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to choose this option because he's not going to be ready for the next option if I hit him with this. So if I hit him with this, then I get another DI mix up. Like, this is why I say it's so important that Sylvanos has, or this is why I bring up the fact, I mean, that Sylvanos has unblockables. Because this, this is what this means is that, because what it means to have an unblockable while you're trying to mix someone in a combo, it means you always can circle back to, to the unblockable. So let's say I land this four till and he misses the DI. Which is in, right? Like that was good DI. That was DI out. But if he if he misses the DI on four tilt, what do I do from that? Hmm? What do I do? Because if I go for like another forward tilt, he may DI that out. Or he may DI jabs out, or you know, he may DI something out. What should I go for? Well, you should circle back to your unblockable. So F tilt. Oh, he missed the DI on that. Hold on. Oh, he missed the eye. That's Nair is an unblockable. Okay. Side B. Oh, that's gonna be a hard DI, to be honest. But if you get that DI, yeah, DI is not gonna work on that. Unfortunately, it's the way the move's designed. Uh, what's up to? Oh, up to. Right. That's an unblockable, right? So you you get mixes. Oh, that was a sick turn around. Right. So this character is all about just straight, this game is all about straight up just mixing people the moment you get a hit. Like, you find your unblockables and you circle back to the unblockable like this. And then when they fuck up the eye, I almost had the Empire 2. Uh, when they fuck up the eye, you get another mix. So you, you're just constantly trying to mix people. If you main Reyna and Tekken uh, 8, you know exactly what that feels like. Where you land a mid and they're, st and they're stuck standing. And that means you get another pressure mix up into like a low and now they're stuck standing. Because her lows don't knock you down but they give her plus frames. And so you create these vortexes of people having to like eat this mix, eat this mix, eat this mix. And their, chi and their health is being chipped down as the, co as the pressure keeps going. That is the same idea of a combo in Rivals of Ether. Take this mix or to eat this pressure. Like get, like take this mix, eat this pressure. Like get. Okay, I'm just over here like talking, trying to like the talking is messing me up. But like think of what I'm saying. Like what while I'm doing this stuff. Like like no one would be ready for any of these timing mix-ups. These. These move choices, that's what you have to look for. That's why raster players are so scary, because they're they're constantly mixing what side they're on while they're comboing you with what and then they pick strange some, what, what seems to you strange uh, move choices in their combo game because they're trying to find that DI mix. Soul rifle. It's funny, somebody like I it was Y, it was just, he, he, it was some player named Y, and he looked at this one clip of me getting destroyed by a soul rifle. And he was like, D all you did was DI in. And, and I had to look at that. And I'm like, do you notice the fact that he is switching his side of Maple? Because like, he's turning my DI out into DI in. And he's also picking moves here that are not normal, like, options. You know, and when you pick moves that are not normal options, people don't know immediately what to do in those scenarios. And so you have to be kind of thinking on the fly with Silvanos. You have to know what these moves do and what you get from them if they miss DI. Or to honestly, inevitably, when they miss DI, because again, if you're bl if you're blending these nares and dares and up air one, like and then more dares and you know and then random random jab special, it's like wait, when did why did we jab there? And then now we're getting all these other oh I should down to the there, but we get all these other openings. Like you have to mix that. Oh, this character has a Dacus. Hold on, we have to keep drifting basically that but imagine imagine okay so basically the idea is they miss di on this down tilt here right and then the, and then they 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 realize they're like oh fuck i missed di on down tilt and then they try and drift away from me i can't up smash that normally but with with the dacus i can i can and, I, and i've gotten that and i'm like wait this character 
is insane. And then not only did he do that, but now in positions where I like I fear somebody, right? And I know I can I can look at the DI and I already know they're going to a platform. Now I don't, I, I won't be slow, slightly, slightly out of range to cover the entire platform. No, now I can Dacus into the platform. You know, that that is so helpful. Or even even air dodge callouts or air dodge punishes. I've been doing with this like. Like I can I can eyeball an air dodge and know I can Dacus that. Literally. Like, oh he air dodged. It's a little hard for me on the left side for some reason. Yeah, the fact he can Dacus is insane. Because you'll throw seeds up, right? Right? You'll throw seeds up in the air and they're like kinda getting irritated if you do this correctly. Like if you do it correctly, right? You throw one seed up, then you wait. See how he responds. You throw one four to it out. See how you respond. You know what I'm saying? You throw both, right? He parries one. The second one covers the second. The second one covers the parry, right? I've, I've been doing that recently too, where you throw this one and he parries it, but the second one will break the first one, and you're and it's completely neutral again. Like you're new to this even. And then oh, and then after that, I promise you they get hit by Howl because they never ready to double parry. They're never ready to double parry in that situation. It's so like you do this, you do this, and then like you kind of stutter step, and then they kind of well, you don't run off stage, but you kind of stutter step it. And once they throw out their like attack, because they're like, I get, I want to use that that um, that invincibility. You 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 uh, whiff punish with Howl, and Howl is so good because you don't have to like Sylvanos has so much range, right? But on some of these moves, like for some reason this Vine, notice how like the, like, the beginning part of Sylvanos' Vine is a hurt box. The hurt box on Howl is actually amazing. Like as an attack, let's say I have all this grass down around me, right? Sylvanos has so many multi-hit moves that are so bad on trade, but Howl is so good on trade. So sometimes wake up Howl or Howl in a skirmish. Like, like you guys, you're both like in a situation where you're both too close to each other. Sometimes you just Howl in DI because because if if you trade with like a Ford Till or something, like the gra like the immediate grass when you're on your feet will put him in so much hit. Like there's so much more hits done on this Howl than my jab one. Or like the, the first hit of my, my forward tilt. Yeah. So like my forward tilt is not good. Like the, like the tail hit itself by itself is going to get me destroyed. It has no knockback. It has like no hits done. My up tilt is a multi hit that has three hits. And, and only the last hit has really good hits done. I'm not trading. And my jabs only cover literally in front of my face. So if we're in, again, if we're in a skirmish, all my moves feel useless. But Howl will cover me immediately, basically, well, I mean, not immediately, but it'll it'll cover right around me. It'll protect me. Like if I know we're gonna, if I know we're gonna trade, I'm gonna Howl. Ah, also, these seeds save his life in neutral. In new, there's so many times where people don't want to deal with the ground game, right? Because Sylvanas is a broken ground game, literally broken. Like that's why that's why I noticed I was getting so like I realized I get so pissed about the parry mechanic because I main Sylvanas. Because I've never been this pissed at the mechanic when I played Zetterburn or main Forsburn for like two and a half years. I've never had gripes with parry like this, right? And I realized because people are so scared. Oh, Sylvanos are like they have so few options even to deal with all this range that they have to parry him like you're getting bullied You're getting bullied by him, you know It's really this down tilt this, this unreactable side B It's humongous quick down tilt, you know, these are these are some scary moves genuinely Right the th like and also the threat of how like, like yeah, I know if you parry how right it'll uh It'll put me in a parry stun, right? But Howl also says if I read you doing any weird thing over there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can howl. Or and if you're not mentally ready for it, I can howl, and you, you'll be opened up. And so people just jump off the ground versus Sylvanos all the time, and they air camp him, right? And then they try to force him to commit to these aerials to try to get him, right? And then they, and then they whiff punish you because they're laggy. And so this is what I say, this neutral B is broken because you do stuff like this, right? You just, oh, you don't want to come down here? That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, parry that. Yeah, come deal with me, right? Now come down here. Play my game. Yeah. This is, this is how you play Sylvanos. You don't commit to those jump-ins. You, you play around the timing. 
on these. You you can jump in with these from the side. But I know it's laggy. Right? That's the thing I had to think of too, right? You see this and it's like, oh, it's so fucking laggy. Right? But it's a mix-up. Because everyone's expecting Silvano's to jump. They're reacting to this jump. They're not reacting to this, right? Especially if you do it from over here. Like, you can start pressuring from here even like you know look at look at the versatility of this seed you don't have to go over there and commit your full body like just being in this vicinity with Silvanos is terrible you don't want to be this close to anyone period you want to throw keep them at bay you want to pressure them from afar you use these seeds to save your life in neutral you do not do this you do not do this unless they're not ready for it as a mix-up. You do not rely on those aerials. And then these seeds, again, are his most consistent way to kill. These seeds in neutral, right, will, will, will start making you so proficient using them that you'll start to just catch seed back airs. You know, look at the angle that's even doing. You'll just start, you can see it already. If that seed hit, hits a net up corner, I get a back here, right? You can see, you can literally see the, the confirm with the seeds, right? And so you play around with these in the air, right? If they don't want to commit to you, you go to the platform and F2 as a mix up, right? If, if they run in, this F2 is so good because it is an anti air, honestly. I, the amount of people who get to this 45 degree platform, right? And they want to come down and like approach me and get with punished or, or just approach stuffed by this F tilt is uncountable. Like I can't count the number of times I've done that to where even Cortez was like, the way you use four tilt, or even my friends and uh, Cortez have been noticing like the way I use four tilt, I feel like what well, you use that as an anti air is actually really cool. Like, you know, this, this is something now people aren't really doing. Like this is an anti air. This is an anti air. Like, even that's an anti-air, like, you know, he is like the king of anti-air, honestly. Which is funny, because I never saw him that way, because I thought he wanted you to stay on the ground. I thought Sylvanas wanted you to stay on the ground, when actually, he wants you in the air. Honest to God, he wants you in the air. He's better when you're in the air, because then you have to come down into Howl, which gives him a free neutral win. Like, Howl... Like, yeah, when they're, like, if they're, again, I have to say this, if they're on the ground with Howl, yeah, it's kind of scary to throw out, because if you, if you didn't condition them early enough, yeah, and you try to Howl, you're gonna get parried, but if they're in the air, you have access to this giant hitbox, this is you, this is your, this is your grass, this is not his grass, so I used to see Lunala, or Coda, or, they go by Cherry now, um, they used to do this thing at the ledge, where if you back air through the wall and they tech it, you would kind of like double jump and, and you would like cast a tech. But unfortunately, that only works in like one specific spacing. That's, no, it works in like a lot of spacing. It's just, it, there's so many variables to this. And, and if you miss, you're right here whiffing a, like a, like a, like a non-pinned back air, which has like so much lag. So, I used to hate doing this as like the Silvanos tech check. And so what I do now is, I throw these seeds, right, as the tech- oh, get off of here. I was about to say, get off here. So these seeds are my tech check. Oh, I kind of need you over here. Damn. Okay. So I throw in the seed, and if they tech the seed, you just get a back air. Like, or you can wait even for the Nitsumi to run out, and you still get your back air. And you're so much better positioned that you don't have to really worry about anything. And so I really, really love seeds in the back air and not just raw look for back air. Like, like to get your back airs in general with this character, I say look for seeds first. Ooh, my God, that was gross. So Savannah's jabs, right? Everyone thinks these are so broken. Right, who are who are not Silvanos players, and every Silvanos player is like these are okay, you know, right? Because I, like I said earlier, they only cover in front of his head. But the thing about this that's actually the, the actual coup de gras here is jab two. 
Jab two is the jab people are really talking about when they're when they're talking about the broken range. Look at that. That's that's the broken jab people are really talking about. This jab one is shit, to be real. That's why it's so hard for Silver Mains to be like, oh, we have a good jab. Because this jab one is honest to God shit. Because it doesn't cover in front of us and it doesn't have the range to make up for the fact that it does not cover in front of us enough. Like, like it has disjointed, right? But I you we all know this is not enough disjoint to beat to beat real moves in this game. It's really not. And we are not a character that likes to trade, so this jab one is shit. But if you're a Silvanos player, you need to be playing as if jab two is the real jab. Like, your jab actually gets better as as you keep going. Because then you have jab two, right? But then you have, you know, pedal weight. Like, your jab gets better. It becomes more threatening as as you get like the, 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 the range. Like, you want the range, it's going to take some time. Like, don't think of it as... My jabs suck because they don't have it's inconsistent in jab. No, think of it as no, my jabs get better. I need to get this jab too. I get to this jab too. It's like look at that range. Like and then I get this. Like you know, I can mix up off of that. Like you want that jab too, not that jab one. And so when you're tech chasing people, do not space for this jab one, guys. Or at least this video is for me also. I gotta always say that because I'm I'm inevitably gonna forget all of this. And so I need a vi I need videos for myself too as a player. So do not space do not be here trying to get this jab one during a tech chase at Silvanos. No. Let them wake up into this fucking jab two, because everyone in this game wants to wake up mash or wake up parry. Let them mash to this big ass move and tell them to shut the fuck up. Like literally, I'm not even kidding. Like, shut the fuck up. Be deal with this jab. You wanna wake up up B with Raster? You wanna wake up jazz with Raster and get the fucking get jabbed. Like I don't care. You know what I'm saying? And then because you're you're mashing, you're not ready to, to deal with the next mix up because this ja this jab too leads into a tech chase so it's like look at that literally leads to a tech chase so this jab two is the money because jab two gives you access to, to jazz special mix-ups gives you access to tech chase mix-ups gives you access to just mix-ups in general this is this is it beats things this this is this is the real disjointed jab people are scared of they are scared of this fucking range this is broken this is again why he's broken on the ground this ground range is massive there's no jab that beats this fucking range except claren claren is the only you need a sword you need a sword to beat this. I'm sure these beats. I'm sure. I'm sure these beat fours burn jab one. You need a sword to beat this shit. You know. So like this is this is real ground pressure. Having the longest range jab two in the game. It and it's cancelable. It's cancelable and it has jab special backup. Like this is crazy. Like you can do jab two. What do you want to do about this? <laughs> what do you want to do about this? I'm serious though. I'm serious. Like this is what I'm saying. His blender is so powerful. Like you're gonna be doing shit like this, right? Do so. And then we have something I don't think I I have even talked about enough. It is these weak down tilts. Silvano's so weak down tilt is is like my favorite move. It's like a Swiss Army knife in terms of speed. Look how fast he's come out, right? That's the thing about this down tilt. It has a lot of end lag. But they gave it a lot of range and it comes out very fast for the range it has. But even though you're not using all that range with these weak down tilts, they're still pretty fast, right? And they set up into itself. Like, look at that. It comboed into the tipper. Or it'll start a tech chase. Like, these are so good because no one's expecting to get hit by, like, they don't really know the angle they're getting sent when they get even hit by weak down tilts. So, like, I just get free, like, uh, no tech opening. Like, this is why the tech chase is so good for Sylvanas, because you can do something like weak down tilt against people who are mashing. Because all people do in this game are wake up mash or wake up parry. So if you know they're wake up mashing a lot, you do something like weak down tilt howl. Yeah, mash into that. Yeah, mash into that that complete disjoint and get Dacus on this platform for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is literally what you have to read people. You have to read them. You have to get used to understanding player habits with this character. You do, because his howl is so rewarding. If you can get down the player habit. And these weak down tilts, man, are insane. Because they're so fast, I kind of use them like a, like, like a quick boxing option almost. Like, get off me. I kind of like him. Yeah, it starts in his head. So it's like, yeah, it's right here. Yeah. I love this down tilt. Like, I, I actually wake up down tilt with Sylvanos a lot, a lot of the time now instead of wake up jab. <laughs> Cause this jab doesn't beat a lot of things. Like some, obviously, you know, if you want, it's a fast option. You wake up the jab. But if you're confident, you got the spacing down. Honestly, I'm gonna just do wake up down tilt. Real talk. Because like, he kind of crushes a little bit of stuff when he's doing this. To be honest. Oh, and up B. So the final move is up B yet again. I finally figured out how to use this move. 
So, as a mix-up for this howl, like, the, the same way people use, I mean, the same way you're going to be using howl when people want to jump on you, is the same way you use Sylvano's upbeat. Like, it is, one, an escape when they're trying to land on you. It's an escape, but it's, a, it's an escape with a threat, because it could come back up with a kill move. So at, at basically you trade Howl for up B almost, almost at, at kill percents. Cause you kind of just looking for them to jump in at you. And then if they come in wrong, you kind of just come back and like even, even um, Lunala used it like this uh, in tournament and it was succeeding. Like this is how you, this move is an anti-air also. Cause you're gone. And then you don't even have to, and then also when well, you don't bite and you burrow, you come up 20, 19 frames faster than, than a normal Sylvano's burrow. Like, if I come up over here, oh my lord, that felt like glue. That felt like genuine glue. But on the grass, I can move so much faster, 19 frames faster, So which is almost a third of a second. So if I notice you're not, um, like, you, like if I, I'm, I'm burrowing to, to check you. And if I notice I can't bite, I'm just going to reappear. But if I can bite, I'm gonna come up with the bite, you know? So as an anti-air, it's pretty low committal once you have grass down. You have to use all your moves. If you don't use all your moves, you're gonna be losing. And that's kind of how I've been playing him wrong. I've been playing him like Forest Burn back in the day, where Forest Burn players weren't using smoke because they thought it was a meme. Grass is not a meme. Grass is real. You need to howl, spam these people. If they jump, if people like to be jumpy versus Sylvanos because they're scared to play on the ground, look for when they jump in. Stare at them, literally focus on when they're about to come in. When you see them move or, or twitch, it, honestly, even just seeing a movement twitch is enough to want to howl, and that's fine because they can't parry it if you're using howl correctly. That's what I'm saying. Like, if they're on a platform, what can they do about this howl? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. So they're forced to actually just respect and stay up there, but now it's like, okay, you're going to be waiting. I'm going to throw another flower down and set it back up again. Like, yeah, I can play around. And look at that patch of grass here. It's another howl. Like, this is grass management. I am, you will never touch me sometimes. Like, especially when I lock in. And again, these side Bs are random. Oh, I've got to have a flower, right. The flowers block projectiles for one. They are immune to projectiles for one second. So... What this means is that when you're going against matchups like Zetterburn or um, Crag, even, oh, let me not Crag, but Rano or Zetterburn specifically, those two matchups are almost invalidated sometimes by good flower play because they are immune to projectiles. So if you time this, right, the, the first second it plops down, the Rano throws dart, okay, the flower is immune to that. Now the Rano will throw a second dart because he's frustrated. But while he's throwing that second dart, the second flower has gone over his dart. And so our same with the idea with Zetterburn Fireball. It's the exact same scenario. And so now you are planting more grass as he is doing nothing with his fireball or his dart, right? That is the, the how why these flowers are already good and neutral for that sense against projectiles. And and two, now you have grass down. And what that means is the moment you make any call out in neutral, like if, if that Rano wants to throw a dart, right? In this scenario, let's say Rano was standing here and he wants to throw a dart while I'm standing here to get rid of that flower, the first flower in between us. If I read that that Rano threw a dart while he's throwing that dart, while that Zetterburn is throwing that fireball, while whatever character is doing with their action, this Howl is punishing that because I read it because they're playing around this flower. They're focused on my flowers. If you make them focus on these seeds, focus on these, focus on these things, they're not thinking about this range. They're not thinking about how, they're not thinking about this surprise attack. They are not thinking about any of this. This is how you have to play as neutral, right? The actual flower while it's on the field is amazing because it allows Sylvanos to truly command every part of the stage whenever he wants because randomly this unreactable up uh, this unreactable side b has now fl flung this monster at you with these giant hitboxes across the stage right or at least put him in like into a situation where he can mix you now with one of these crazy unblockable combos but yeah flowers are phenomenal and that's what i'm saying so like this character is actually so intuitive because because like okay so all he wants to do is put down grass so he can anti-air. Uh, this is the game plan for Sylvanos. This is it's very simple. He just wants to put down enough grass to where Howl is a threat. That's all he wants to do, the whole neutral. 
and then you want to fake that you have, like, you want to use this range as a mix-up to howl, to, to mix-up to the seed, uh, to reuse the range as, as a, a to, to, to a side B mix-ups, like, these are your mix-ups on the ground, seed, down tilt, howl, side B, like, these are mix-ups, where they're not, like, using when they're not ready, like, this is why pl platform fighting game players get it wrong, they'll get punished for doing something, and they'll be like, I'll never do that again, because that was the wrong option, but in a regular fighting game, all that means was you guessed wrong that time. That's how you have to think about platform fighters. Just because you get hit or even die for doing something doesn't mean that, that that's a bad option. It just means you guessed wrong in the moment. And that allows you to be more of a playmaker. Because you can do down airs in the nair and then you're like, oh, I know I can get this because, you know, he didn't, he didn't deal with that. Like, you have to test these people. You cannot just assume... You cannot assume people are perfect and are going to uh, evade everything you do. Otherwise, you'll never make a play. You'll never get a combo. You have to, you have to test these people. You have to act. You actually, you have to actually ask him. Do you know how to deal with Howl? Do you know how to get in through these 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 seeds? Do you know how to get past my seed anti air? Do you know how to deal with my random side B openings? from across the stage like do you know how to deal with any of this like you have to force your game plan on the people that's what fighting games taught me fighting games are all about forcing your game plan on the people and this is Silvano's game plan you put down these flowers you put down this grass someone told me that one of the scariest things about Silvano's Silvano's in general is it even like his damage or his, his, his kill power whatever his loops or anything the scariest thing about Silvano's is not even his range it's the threat of his range people are scared of, of, of the fact that he could just randomly down tilt the fact that he honestly could randomly back air the fact that he has this unreactable side B like the fact that he has these options are scary there's a whole diagram showing the the actual like the like the full range of what Silvanos has when standing still and it is honestly disgusting of the amount of the amount of immediate range he has access to from from standing still right from standing still he has all this a accessible range right so people are scared to be on the ground versus you so they want to jump you're looking for people are people are looking for howl it's actually crazy when i notice people are standing still on the ground they're looking for howl but if you're looking for howl you're just giving me access to, for surprise openings because you're looking for one specific option and I'm and I have timing mix-ups now because you're looking for one thing, and now I'll throw in the option once it once something else has hit you. Because now your brain isn't thinking about the option, thinking about what else has hit you. You know, like what the hell? This, this isn't the howl. There's the howl. Wait, why do you howl now? Because I'm mixing you. That's why. I just want to throw up different moves at you always. Because I was taught years ago, and I didn't even realize what the words meant. But Theo, my recruitment, the Neo crew leader, he told me that. All I did was um, nair in the up tilt with, with Zetterburn, and it made it really obvious. What my, uh, it, it made it, it DIing me really easy because I'm doing the same fucking two piece opener every time, you know? Even Giga tried to teach me that, and I wasn't understanding when he said, You're just doing that special howl. And I'm like, Yeah, because it's good. And he's like, No, you're. But he didn't really got dive into it, but what he meant by that was you're supposed to be mixing these niggas, not spamming the same thing, yeah, because it's working a couple times in, in a row. You know, like, you're supposed to be mixing your entire kit. And I don't know why I, I was relying on game feel to understand that instead of actually just understanding that you're, this, this is not feel, you're just understanding that you're mixing this man. How could he? How could he possibly defend against moves that have requirements to get out mixed with four basically unblockables at low percents, especially like at low percents? This character is free. Like this is free, free in the free in the. Okay, you didn't think an up air one was coming to stop your di here in the jab and the oh hey, how tech chase and another wait, up air two that has more hit stun and now you have to like there is so much mix happening there like, especially when I lock the fuck in and I don't drop like this is this is what this character is about. You're scared to be on the ground because these large range normals start these blender combos, right? But if you jump to the air, you have to come down into this broken howl that he's been setting up with these flowers the whole game. Like, it's like, like honestly, I didn't understand this character like this either until I watched the Loxodont breakdown I did, like, like 20 literal times because I just liked the trailer breakdown I did. But I realized I'm breaking down so much of his of his character trait that I don't even, I don't even think of Sylvanos in this way. 
why don't I try to give Sylvanos in that way? And this is what has led me to, this conclusion. So, speaking of conclusion, I hope you guys have enjoyed my Sylvanos final-ish breakdown. Maybe final is breakdown. I might discover something else, who knows. But I think this might be my final Sylvanos guide or breakdown. So, it's been Rottweiler. Peace out. Don't tell me why these always still came back. Olivia, do the dash. Eject them in one hit. Ain't no focus fast. You straight from the past. Just don't fucking crash. You plus your super clone don't add up to me. I just hit the math. Yo, it's been a blast. Time to clear the cash. Man, it's kind of sad. The Beatles just got nerfed and all they did was laugh. Yeah, but fuck it. That's all in the past.